Hello everybody and welcome to Promise Gaming and Steamed, the series where I go through my Steam library and find the games that I bought but never had a chance to play. And today we're trying out Book of Demons, a hack and slash dungeon crawler with a really unique art style where the goal is to progress down the dungeon underneath the church all the way to the depths of hell and take out this guy. <laughs> never before have I seen such a frightening duck. There are three character classes you can pick from, the Warrior, the Rogue, and the Mage. We're going to play with the Rogue, Rana. It's a name I use for a lot of my female characters. And let's jump back into the game. Now, right off the bat, you can see this has a very interesting aesthetic. Uh, I'm pretty confident the developers, Thing Trunk, are trying to set up a series of games uh, based around something they call the Paperverse. And everything looks like one of those pop-up paper books, which is a really unique art style that I've never seen before, and I kind of like it, honestly. Now, this particular game... Uh, seems very Diablo-inspired to me. I'm not sure if that's a fair description. I don't think Diablo uh, has a monopoly on the concept of traveling under a dungeon to the depths of hell to kill a demon. But, I mean, you've even got your sage Deckard cane like character who sometimes says, stay a while and listen. Like, how am I not supposed to see this as a Diablo-inspired game? That's not a bad thing, though. Diablo is very, very good, and this game is uh, trying to be a sort of spiritual successor, and I can appreciate that. There are a lot of characters to interact with. We'll worry about them later, though. Let's go to the church, and you can see that we are progressing further and further down into the depths of a dungeon. Now, one thing this game tries to do, which is very interesting, is accommodate to different levels of uh, dedication from the players. So, for example, if you only have time for a very quick game, it tries to give you an option for that with a very small floor. It estimates will take seven minutes, and here it estimates about how much of a reward you can expect. Only two little floors, here's what you can expect. Go to a small dungeon, though, 14 minutes, add in a little bit more. Medium dungeon, 21 minutes, add in a little bit more. Lots more rewards to enjoy, though, and you make a lot more progress down the, um, down the dungeon toward the boss. In this case, Quest 1, The Cook, which is something I have not tried out yet. Let's go ahead and jump into a medium dungeon right here. And you can see different types of enemies you might expect to find. Uh, we can click right here and get set up. Now, one thing that's interesting about this game, well, among many other things, is everything is set on a track, right? Your character can only move along the main path and interact with anything in your vision. Uh, that can get a little unusual because there's a limit to how much you can actually do as far as dodging when you're on this track. I would actually say that in a lot of ways it is a downside for this game, not being able to properly uh, dodge. You're stuck on a track and it's a little difficult to move around and stop and then turn around and then retreat and stuff. I don't know. There are parts of that that seem a little bit weak to me, but nonetheless, it does present an interesting challenge. Some of those enemies you can see right there, by the way, have a shield. You have to click on that stuff to at uh, attack and break through. Here's a card we just got, Splitting Bow, your arrows split into multiple arrows on hits. This game does portray itself to be a bit of a deck builder. I'm not sure that's a very fair description. Technically, yes, you do have cards, right? So you can build up your deck right here and decide what arsenal you want to take into a dungeon. Functionally, though, each of these cards act like just regular abilities on an action bar, and that's it. So I wouldn't really say that this is a deck builder, but... It is kind of nice having access to all of these different abilities at any given time. So what does Splitting Bow do? It splits out additional arrows on hit. Um, yeah, I could replace this for something. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and remove my quiver and replace it with Splitting Bow right here. And you can see this takes up some permanent mana. Actually, I guess it didn't even explain any of the mechanics. Okay, so here you go. You have your health, all right? You're used to this. And then you have your mana. And you use up mana to do special abilities like Ice Arrows or Flaming Leap or whatever else. Green items here are permanent and give a passive effect, but they take up some of your mana. They lock it out so you can't access it when you might need it. So that's the trade-off there. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and continue exploring the dungeon. I want to find some good gear, some uh, good items. You can interact with anything that is in your vision range. So you want to go ahead and pop all the urns, gather up all the treasure, and so on. There are little uh, health and mana pools that you can access in order to uh, get more health. Here's one of those enemies that has a shield I was talking about. So you have to hold, click and hold on the shield to get rid of his um, uh, armor. And then you can actually do some damage. Now, as far as just attacking enemies, I can sit here. And what will happen is my character will automatically attack. Just a little auto attack. Whatever is in range right off the bat. You can see this happening. I'm not doing anything. However, if you click and hold or just rapidly click, you do a lot faster damage. So you always want to be interacting with your environment in that way and attacking things. I just got a slight level up for my mana, which is certainly nice. 
Uh, now here's one of those cases I'm talking about where it's a little difficult to dodge. So that thing is going to be going down that path, and what am I supposed to do? It's a straight line. I can't actually hit him. So, yeah, dodging can get a little irritating. Now, if I get over here and click and hold on his abilities, I can stop him from channeling his spells. That's rather important for the spellcasters. They can do some rather nasty stuff. But otherwise, this is basically the game. You just keep marching around, killing monsters. Sometimes you run into um, bosses who are particularly difficult. Sometimes you get in little rooms that are very claustrophobic, and there's not a lot of room to get around, which is irritating. Now, what's this? Some tough monsters have golden hearts. Those monsters are temporarily immune and spawn guardians. Use fire against monsters. Well, I have Flaming Leap. Can I do that? Okay, hang on. Flaming Leap. Oh! Well, that's not what I meant to do. I kind of overshot that a lot. Uh, let's get the heck out of here. Boom. I was kind of expecting to get to do some um, fire damage to him. You're supposed to leave a fire patch, but that did not happen. Okay, well, we're just going to keep backing up and doing damage to this guy. He keeps spawning more skeletons, but fortunately they're very easy for me to kill. Now, one thing I like playing with the rogue. Uh, the rogue, if you hold down shift, has basically unlimited range. You can't see exactly what's going on out there, but I can just keep doing this, for example, and hit things that are well outside of my field of vision. No other character can do that, and that means I have a pretty good strategic advantage, especially when I'm dealing with other ranged characters that are hard to dodge. Here's one of those cases where going through a door can be a little annoying because I know there's an enemy right here and there's nothing I can do about it. And the ranger, or the rogue, sorry, does not like fighting things that are next to it. It uh, can't use its bow, has to use melee attacks, which are pretty weak. So we're going to try to run through here and then run. Run away. Run away. Run away. Oh, crap. Okay, can we do this? Cancel your spell. We're in a bit of trouble. Run, and I'm dead. Uh, catch the stars to recover. Cool. Let's flaming leap out of there. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Ranger, pretty weak in a small space like that. No surprises there, I suppose. We are in a lot of trouble. How the heck am I going to escape all of this? Run, and I'm dead. The game can be a little unforgiving for a rogue in a small space, uh, but the good news is if we resurrect in town and get to our stuff, we can get our uh, equipment back. Now, one big downside to dying is the magical cauldron. So if we talk to the barmaid right over here... I don't need to talk to her right now. She's got some story for me. Uh, if you, The Magical Cauldron, as you are picking up various different upgrades, crystals, you level up, you can upgrade your health or your mana, and whichever one you choose, the opposite goes into a cauldron. If you spend some money to collect it, you can get some extra levels up, and including some prizes that you find randomly in the dungeon. If you die, you lose all of those prizes. So it's a bit of a risk-reward thing. The longer you wait, the more prizes you can get for a pretty small cost. But if you die, you lose everything. Now, some enemies are special. They have a poison effect to them. Uh, so when they die, they explode in poison, and that can be pretty bad. This particular enemy enrages every time you hit him with an auto attack. So if you hit him too fast, he can heal himself and cause a lot of damage to everything around him. We obviously are not eager to deal with that. All right, so we finally cleared through that room. Yeah, it's unfortunate that I die, but it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, is this a Crusader figure? I've never seen one of these before. Okay, well, I have ice arrows that I can use to try and slow it down. That obviously would be pretty nice. Uh, some special abilities, such as my ice arrows, have an ammunition requirement. So I have to use up quivers, for example. Quivers are full of special arrows in order to actually use the effect, which is not too hard to come by. Then there are things like health potions and so on. Those are obviously the exact same kind of thing. Dodging here is such an annoying deal. I really am not a fan of that. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, really, really do not like the track. The track is a interesting mechanic you have to play around, but not that fun or intuitive. What I just found here, by the way, is an unidentified magical item. So if I take that back to the sage, he'll be able to identify it for a price. And oftentimes the magic card or the magic item you get is uh, pretty good. Usually better than the thing I actually currently have. Okay, I just leveled up, which is pretty nice. So if you click on the unspent character points, you can decide if you want to increase your mana pool or your health pool. I tend to prefer health. You can see that the mana just went to that cauldron. So that's what I was talking about before, where you can uh, go back to the cauldron and try to get that extra upgrade if you're willing to pay the price. But the cost goes up every time you use the cauldron. So the longer you wait, the more value you get in terms of upgrades for your money spent. We just picked up something called a Sun Rune. You can craft upgrades for your cards, rank them up. It does tend to take a lot of different runes, uh, some of which I haven't even discovered yet. So I don't know how easy that is to do, and maybe it's ever worth it. I don't know, but nonetheless. Oh, God, what just happened? I think I'm about to die. We need to run. Run. Click through here. Thank you. 
Right, how am I supposed to deal with a room like this? It's tiny, and there's a lot of monsters all in close proximity. There's no freaking winning this. Oh! Boom! Fire! Please, just die. Quickly die. Oh god, oh god, how am I gonna get out of here? I'm dead, I'm dead. No, I'm not, I'm not dead yet, but I'm very close to dead. Run! Okay, I use Death Rage. I don't even know what that is. Death Rage is triggered when you're about to die. It recharges when you level up. Well, that's certainly nice. Okay, how am I gonna deal with this? I'm gonna pop in here, I'm gonna do some damage. Not too much, because then he enrages. And I'm gonna do some more damage, and now he's dead. Oy vey, okay. Once everything is dead and you've collected literally everything, you can just click on the stairs and automatically leave and progress to the next floor. When you are in this map mode, choosing between the rooms to go to, you can go back to town with no penalty. Oftentimes, there's a monk guy here who can give you some health upgrades, usually worth going to. Oh, so here's the barmaid we was talking about before with the Magical Cauldron. If I wanted to spend 1,200 uh, coins, I could get four more mana added to the pool. If I wait and get more life and prizes, obviously the value of that goes up quite a bit. If we go to the Sage, we can identify a card, which I'm going to go ahead and do right now. Let's find out what we get. We get an upgrade to our amulet. The Amulet of Mana of Raven. Seems a little silly. Regenerates mana points over time. Okay. And if I had more money, I would also unlock a card slot. So what happens with my magical item here? If I click on this... So right now we're using the magical amulet... Oh, there's Raven and Venom. I see. Speeds up poison on monsters by 10% or increase maximum mana. Well, that just sounds straight up better. So we're just going to go ahead and use the thing of uh, Raven instead of Venom. Yeah, so there's lots of different variations of some of your cards, especially if they are magical items, which you can individually rank up. You can see the star mechanic there on the side to know how many ranks are left. So if you go here, for example, to upgrade a card, you can see that we'd have to spend some runes to upgrade things. Potions and so on. These are the runes we already have access to. We need a lot of runes that we uh, currently do not have access to to upgrade most of the items that I would care about. So we're not going to worry about upgrading any cards right now, but obviously that becomes very important later. So let's go ahead and continue exploring the dungeon on the next floor. Once again, of course, we are stuck on this track, so if people use range attacks, it's really not much I can do to dodge. Uh, again, I can't really decide if that's a unique idea for a mechanic that you have to play around and it should be considered as kind of an asset, a challenge mode for the game, or if it's just a really annoying pet peeve. Personally, I'm inclined to think it's just a really annoying pet peeve, but... Whatever. Anyway, ah, and running away can be a little bit tricky because you click to stop moving and then you have to back up, ah, get stuck in these intersections and you have to click backwards to try and move away and retreat. And retreating can be very important, especially if you're going to be a ranger operating at a long range. But you can see the power of that long range. I can just sit back here and do a lot of damage and not worry about getting too close to them to actually interact with me. That's pretty, that's a pretty big advantage. What the heck is this? It's a boss. Crypto Verde. It's a special type of um, boss spider thing. So presumably I need to destroy the things that are guarding it, these zombies, in order to actually do any damage to it. Now, bosses have multiple mechanics to it. So we've gotten through the first phase. The second phase begins now, and you actually have to kill it. Um, so bosses usually take a little while to take down. They do have a lot of special mechanics to them that make them a bit more difficult, more of a challenge. Sometimes they will just utterly obliterate you and it's completely unfair, but hey, that's part of the fun of the dungeon crawler and the procedurally generated experience, right? Again, I kind of have to enjoy the paper aesthetic of this. It, just hopping around here, it looks like we're moving a piece around on a game board, you know? As if you set out a big pop-up paper book on a table with some friends, and now you're just playing a little RPG experience and somebody's reading out like the random encounters that happen. I think that's kind of cool. Oh good, we have another uh, boss, the Empowered Soul. Ooh, ghosts can pass through walls and other objects and appear from the corpses of slain enemies. Oh, that's this is gonna be good. Okay, well, maybe you should run from that. Okay, I've been frozen. Hoa! Run away. And let's try to do some damage. This one apparently also does lightning elemental damage, so every time we hit it, it shoots lightning around. We're gonna have to dodge some of that. Oh, good, there's also a ranger who's trying to shoot me. Love it. Run! Over here, thank you. Okay, try to kill it. Try to kill it. Now, when you finish up a phase for a boss, uh, they do temporarily go immune while they set up a new phase. So it gives you a slight chance to try and uh, back up and reposition yourself. In this case, it looks like he's just going to keep putting up more shields, which is a little annoying, but okay. 
Whoop, 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 whoop. Too much lightning. Too much lightning. Thank you very much. Yeah, positioning, man. It's all about that position. Oh, God. Okay. Standing next to all the lightning is probably not a good idea. Good. Run. Why did you retreat that way? I do not think I said to retreat that way. Apparently, I did, though, and I didn't even realize it. Well, nifty. Okay, cool. We beat up a boss. Left behind a lot of ice patches on the ground and a chalice for a lot of gold. Sweet. So when I go back to town, I will be able to unlock another card slot. And obviously, the more abilities you have, the more flexibility you have to deal with a lot of different situations. Boom, another level up. The good thing about leveling up also is in addition to getting extra mana and health, it reduces the life of all other monsters. So skeletons, for example, regular ones, used to have like three hearts of health. Now they only have one. Um, so monsters progressively get a little bit easier as you go, which is nice. It makes you feel like you're actually ramping up in power and... Old enemies just become, I don't know, run of the mill. Well, this seems like a very unpleasant room. Let's just keep popping in and popping out. Wait for this guy's um, immunity to fall apart and then do some damage to him. There we go. Back on out. Oh, crap. They spawn skeletons. All right. Hang on. I can deal with all of you. One thing I would like to see in this game, I have no idea if it exists and I just haven't gotten far enough. I like to see a lot of really zany combos from all my cards, right? You get like a really absurd like combination of items, and it completely changes the play style. You know, kind of like Path of Exile style. That's kind of something I kind of like to see in a lot of my uh, dungeon crawler experiences. I don't know if that does exist, and maybe I just haven't gotten far enough in this game. Could be, but still. What is this? I have no idea. Oh my gosh, would you please stop rhyming? I get it! Not an ounce of flesh you'll shun. I get it! This cook's work is never done. Just one line. One of those would have been fine. You didn't have to give me four different lines. I didn't need a whole freaking poem, man. Okay, well, anyway, I think it's trying to tell me that I have uh, unlocked the big boss, which uh, we all kind of knew was going to happen. So that's going to be fun to deal with. Let's try to spawn these gargoyles, make sure they don't become a problem later. Yeah, so we're going to have to go deal with them. I imagine they're going to be quite tricky. How much you want to bet the inability to dodge is going to cripple me, and I'm going to die a lot. So what do I do? Do I just click on this to, like, open the way? Do you know the way to the butcher? Basically, it's a butcher rope off, isn't it? Totally is. Oh, good, we got a creepy portal. Yeah, I'd rather not go through that right now. Um, can I go back to town, please? Yes, I'm going to click on the stairs. There we go. Going to leave here. We'll go back to town. In the meantime, though, because we finished this, we should get all of our rewards. We should have gotten like 15,000 gold out of that overall. Let's see. If I go down, cool. We got to get some XP, some extra avatars. And there's a bunch of different rewards and so on for, I don't know, talking 25 times to the villager and enemies with skills, killed every single enemy, blah, blah, blah. You know, little medals to give you extra XP. And that tells you what to do. Go get your health and mana back. Go get the cauldron. Upgrade your stuff. And I agree. These are all good things to do. So we're going to follow the game's advice. Let's talk to the barmaid. I'm going to use the magical cauldron. Let's spend 1,200 gold to unlock all this before I lose the prizes against the boss. Yes, yes. Every time you do this, the price of the cauldron goes up, which is why there's a risk and reward to waiting as long as you can. Now for the prizes, what do we get? A silver prize. Okay. It kind of looks like opening, like, card packs in Hearthstone or something. Ooh, lots of money. Well, that's pretty nice for me. Okay, and then let's go to the Sage. We're going to unlock a new card slot. Yes, please, and thank you. Okay, so now we can have another item or ability uh, slotted. And I could upgrade something. Uh, I could upgrade the fire arrows now. Hang on, what does that do? So if we upgrade it, it does extra arrow damage. Well, that sounds really useful. Also good at shattering frozen hearts, of which there have been many thus far. Yes, this sounds like the sort of thing that I probably should want to uh, upgrade. So let's put in some sun runes, spend the money, and ba-boom. Now we have fire arrows. Okay, I guess we're ready to go and fight the cook. I'm pretty sure something did die in here, and it's very possible I will also die in here. Am I smelling my preemptive death? What the heck are these giant pots? Can I just shoot him from here? The answer to that is yes, but of course it does provoke the boss. What are you doing now? Is that a carrot? He's throwing carrots of doom! Are those kangaroos? He has summoned zombie kangaroos. 
These are things I never expected to say in my lifetime, but here we go. I need to interrupt some of these spells, I'm assuming. Okay, he just jumps around, apparently. That's fun. I'm gonna use fire arrows to do a load of damage to them. Ah, God, run! I can also jump around. Boom, 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 boom. That was easy, push that phase. Yeah, getting the fire arrows upgraded was a very intelligent decision. Oh good, now we have spiders that are just gonna jump on the roof and fall on my head. That's what I like to see. God forbid anything gets on the path, by the way. You can't go around, you just gotta fight your way through. Or leap, that's why I like having some sort of an escape mechanism. Can you fire, stupid spiders, get the heck out of here? Thank you kindly. Okay, we're pushing ourselves into the final phase. I have to feel like only bad things are coming out of this. Uh, let's go ahead and kill the trash mobs. Run! Jump away. Now, if we ever need to, we can switch our items to get the... Uh, what just happened? I just got hit by rocks. We can switch our items to try to get some um, uh, mana regen to unlock more of my abilities, and that might be necessary. But it looks like if these pools are just going to keep respawning, ow, then that'll be fine. Stop making the rocks fall on my head, please. Thank you. It's very rude. How did you spawn multiple baby spiders? That is not what happens when you kill a spider. If it were, we'd be in an unending wave of spiders. Can you imagine? Your wife calls you to go and kill the spider, and it's like, oh gosh, if I freaking squish this one spider, then we're gonna have to deal with a horde of the things. No, 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 stop your spell casting. And he's dead. No, no he says. <laughs> well, that's a lot of carrots. A lot of carrots of infinite doom. And that's a lot of treasure. So wait. Was he made of carrots? Or does he bleed carrots? Is that how this works? That's a lot of blood. Rated PG-13 for gore. Lots of it. Oh, I'm glad she acknowledges the carrot facts. Okay, what do we get from this? More runes, more runes, more money, and a really nice unidentified card. A legendary card. Should probably find out what that is. Is there anything I'm missing here? I think we got all of the items. Okay. Well, that is it. We finished our first boss. That was actually kind of a fun fight. I'm not going to lie. I kind of liked that one. We can now enter the catacombs, the second stage. And everyone's really happy that one big boss is dead. There's a lot of gossip. If I want to talk to people, they'll be like, You're amazing! And I'll be like, Heck yeah, I am. Shut up, man. I know it. Uh, this guy just identifies all the items for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and identify the card. I want to find out what this is. It costs 5,000! It's probably worth it, though, right? A really good legendary shield, the Aegis. Okay, extra mana, better chance of blocking missiles. Well, considering it's so hard to dodge them, that seems like a really valuable item. Hey, we're looking pretty good now. We're going to go ahead and end things here, though, so you can see what the game's like. I mean, it's exactly what you think it is. Go down to the dungeons, destroy a lot of things, get the treasure, come back, upgrade, get stronger, go do it again. And again and again and again. The game really has a great art style going for it, a pretty interesting mechanic base. I think it's interesting. Would I say it's the best dungeon crawl I've ever done? No, but I think it has a lot of potential for those who are really into that sort of thing. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If so, then I ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.